So everybody in here can benefit from what I have to share this morning, okay? So while she's passing out those tickets, because don't think that you're just going to sit here and just listen to me. You have work to do, okay? <laughs> so you might as well just wake up, get ready for it, because you have some assignments. And everybody's going to get something. You may get, not get the same exact thing, but everybody's going to get a little something. Okay, above and beyond the beauty. After we've put on the makeup, we've gotten the hair done, we need to have a little education. We need to have a little wisdom, knowing how to execute, how to go out into the world and as the theme thrive. So let's define entrepreneur. Many people want to be an entrepreneur. It's a weird name with a, a weird spelling. Many don't know how to spell it. So let's start with that. Entrepreneur, E-N-T-R-E. P-R-E-N-E-U-R. One who organizes, manages, and assumes the risk of a business or enterprise. Let's define enterprise. Enterprise, a project or undertaking that is specifically difficult, complicated, or risky. When we start a business, it's not that you just have money and just open up a business. Scripture says, write the vision and make it plain. So let's um, turn, if you have a Bible or your phone, and if you, if you don't have you, what is it, you version on your phone, you might want to get that app because it's a great tool to have and you have the word access right in your hand. And Habakkuk 2 and 2, if I can get to it. I'm not that savvy when it comes down to all of this. Okay, Habakkuk 2 and 2. And this is going to be um, from the New Living Translation. Then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled if it seems slow in coming wait patiently for it will surely take place it will not be delayed when you start a business you may not be profitable your first year you got to put money into your business to make money most people they want to quit six months in you haven't even started you don't you know nothing about the business and you want to quit at six months sometimes a year you have to put your money back into your business, put time into your business in order for your business to thrive and become profitable. So that's one of the things I want you to say. Okay, if you're in a house, the ones that, the, those of you who are not in business, you have a house, you're not gonna throw in the towel with your home, right? No, what you're gonna do, you're gonna make your money, you're gonna write down a, a little, um, your plan as to how I'm gonna pay these bills. If you're not writing it down, you might want to start doing that. Write all of your bills so you'll know just what's going out and what's coming in. That's the number one thing that we have um, trouble with, and especially in our community, because we wasn't taught. And as we don't really have a money problem, we have a management problem. So we want to learn how to manage our money, and especially if you want to have a business. Now, another thing, and if I get off script, I'll, I'll come back, because sometimes I digress. <laughs> but you, when, um, when you're writing your, um, your plans down, that's whether it's for your business or whether it's for your home, be very, very specific. Don't leave anything out. If you have a, um, if you're setting up a budget, you're, uh, many people will leave off gas. Well, you know you have to have gas to drive your car, but we won't put that on our budget, and so then you wonder where are we falling short. Uh, we don't put that I go out to Papado's or I go out to whatever restaurant. You're eating out. You want to put that down. So in your budget, put all, put everything. Don't leave nothing out. If you have a pet, put your pet on there because you know you got pet food. If you leave it out, you're going to come up short somewhere. Okay, the, the second thing, know what it is that you want. And I'm talking to business people now. Know what it is that, that you want. I'm in the salon business, so if I know that I want to have other uh, stylists in my salon, I have to be specific about that. 
if you have, co if you have a, a, um, employees, write the vision, make it plain. What type of employee do I want to work with? I'm not working with everybody because everybody is just not, it may not be a good fit. It's not that I don't like you. It's just that you may not fit the culture what I have in my salon. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I had a person to come in and I have nothing wrong with tats. That's your thing. You, you know, you wear your tats and you, you know, you, you have the mohawk and you shade up, whatever. You may not feel comfortable in my salon because it's, it's a different culture. I'm not saying that you're not good at what you do. But you have to be very specific about what, you, what it is that you want. And if I can't trust a person, why should I be working with them? I don't want to, like, I'm not at my salon today, but I trust those girls. If I leave something in my room, when I come back, it's going to be there. So you, you got to be specific. So I'm going to give you, um, later on, I'm going to give you um, a dis, uh, an assignment. Those of you who are in business, you're going to let me know. You want to write down what your ideal person that you want to work with. And again, be very specific. Don't leave nothing out. If you want that person to have a car, put it on the paper. If you want that person, if they have children, you want them to have children that are behaved children, put that down. I'm, I'm talking be very specific because what's going to happen is going to come to pass. So if you leave it out, and every time you walk in your business, you have trash on the floor, kids running around, not behaved, they're not disciplined. Well, you didn't write it down. You didn't ask for that, so that didn't come to you. So everything that you write down, be very, very specific. Number three, commit your project to God. We can find that in uh, Proverbs 16 and 3. We we can turn that real quick so we can know what it says and we won't have no questions, no problems. Proverbs 16 and 3. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. If we're believers and we say that we belong to Christ and we know that everything that's in the word of God we can have, we can do, we can be. If we commit our plans to him, we will succeed. Oftentimes, we don't commit it to him because we think we already know it. I got this. I know what I'm doing. So-and-so said to do this, but did you run that by God? Okay? So commit your project to God. Have good character. Integrity. Sister Gwen spoke about that earlier. Integrity. Proverbs 21. And verse 1. No, 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 no. 22. Choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver and gold. In our world today... So many people are fixated on things, money. I mean, it's okay to have money, but don't let the money and the things have us, okay? So you want to have a good, good um, reputation. You don't want somebody to come to your business and, okay, we're, we're, we're exchanging money. I'll just use myself for an example. Okay, I have a client. Miss Sherry comes in and she's getting her consultation and we're going over what she needs what what I recommend she need for her hair Miss Sherry just got a perm last week but I went out to the club or I went out eating oh Miss Sherry you, you need a perm because I'd have messed up my money now I'm gonna pass that on to her I'm gonna I don't have integrity knowing she don't need a perm but I'm gonna tell her she need a perm and Miss Sherry don't know. She knows she got a perm two weeks ago or last week, but I'm telling her, oh, they didn't. It didn't. It didn't take. So, <laughs> so now I'm telling her she need a perm, knowing full well she don't. But I need this money. That's not right. You can't do that. You can, 
but you won't be in business long because people are not crazy. So you want to have a good reputation and you want to, you know, uh, be wise in your choices and the things that we have to say. Uh, I mean, the, the good work. Because if we do a good work as unto the Lord, come on now. So, and scripture says, do a good work as unto the Lord. We don't need a boss over us if we, when we're doing something, if I'm, if I'm, styling somebody's hair and and uh, and this is this happened to me and I'm curling and I singed the back of this person's hair well okay like this lady here she has gray hair that's 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 easy to do if you're using some hot irons and you didn't test them I'm curling this and then she was a senior lady and I singed the hair in the back Ooh. Well, I couldn't just let the lady go and say, see you next week. I had to let her know. I was like, oh, Miss so-and-so, I singed your hair. She said, oh, baby, it's okay. We'll cut it next week, which we did, you know, because it was right in the back. But still, I could not just let that lady leave and have her thinking that, you know, her hair is just the bomb and I just burned it. It's not right. We have to have integrity in our businesses, you know. Okay, and number five. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling y'all, it happens. It happens. I have seen it. And, I, you know, if, if, if it happens at Genesis and I see it, you know, I'm going to pull you to the side. Come here. Come let, let Miss Alicia talk to you, baby. Okay, um, number five. Um, have a good name, reputation. Keep your credit clean pay your bills, improve on your credit scores, FICO scores, and be careful what you put on social media. When you're in business, I just don't think, if I'm venting, I'm, I'm, I'm upset with this young lady, I'm going to put that on Facebook. Well, I'm in business. People, people own the book. And they are watching me, and they are reading comments. So if I'm, I didn't call her name, but I'm venting. Well, you may be a potential client that may want to come to me. When you read my stuff, and it's very negative, I don't know if I want to sit in her chair. I don't know if I want to do business with her, you know. So we have to be very, very careful what we put on social media. If you just have to vent, just call your sister and talk to a girl. Miss so-and-so, she had me so upset today. I just I needed somebody to talk to. But yeah, be careful what we put on social media. Now, when it comes down to our credit and you start in a business, we can't go to a bank and expect the bank to give us money, give us a loan if we don't have our credit together. They're just not, it's just not gonna do it because they wanna know how am I gonna get this money back? And it's important if we say we belong to Christ it's important that we have a good reputation and it's important, that's a part of it. You know, uh, people in business, they are looking for, um, I mean, if you apply it at, at companies, they're looking at Facebook pages now. They're looking at your credit, they don't even know you. And when they pull it up and they see my pay history, they see all of these things, well, I can't trust this person, they don't even pay their bills. And many people will say, well, what does that have to do with me getting a job? Well. What kind of employee are you going to be? What kind of worker are you going to be? If you're in business, why am I going to loan you this money? You didn't pay your, your bills, and so how am I going to get this money? You're applying for $100,000? God forbid. <laughs> and many of, you know, many of us are um, we're failing because of late fees and overdrafts. So you want to be careful with paying your bills late. That can really, really, really put you in a hole. And I'm sharing a lot of this with you guys. I haven't always been in the place that I'm in. I've always paid my bills, but divorce, I was homeless. And homeless, I'm not talking y'all that I was under the bridge. <laughs> I wasn't under the bridge in a, in a, you know, in a tent, but I didn't have I didn't have a house. I was homeless, divorced, and um, I lived in a 10 by 10 room for one full year. I could have gotten an apartment, but I was in school at the time. I was um, um, working, 
you know, full time trying to make it. I was in like $20,000 worth of debt. And it didn't make sense for me to just go and get in more debt, get in a house, get an apartment. So I chose to just stay in this one room. And people would say, how are three women living in this house together? Because, you know, you come up with two women can't live in the same house. You know, you got to get out of here if you think you're grown. Well, I, I thought I was grown and I got out at 19, but at this point in my life, I guess I'm, a, I'm about 26 years old, me and my son, nine or 10 years old at the time. And I lived in this 10 by 10 room for one full year. But I'm grateful today for that 10 by 10 room because it keeps me humble, keeps me with th things in perspective. And my son today, college graduate, um, he sings opera something that he always wanted to do, um, has a great job, and he's thriving because we have to put it in our children. We, the Bible says train up a child. We train our children. We give them that solid foundation, the word of God, and we, we nurture them. And today I can say that, you know, when it comes down to business, it's, you, you may, your business may not be where you're a millionaire, multimillionaire. I'm not that girl. I'm not multimillionaire. Not yet. Yes, not yet. But to pay your bills, you don't have anybody calling you. You can walk in your house and you can say, thank you, Jesus. I don't owe anybody. That's a great feeling. And one of these days, I'm going to know what it's like not to have a house note. One of these days, soon, real soon. But to come out of the debt... In order to come out of the debt, you have to stay focused. Stay focused. So if, if I'm talking to anybody out there that have credit card debt, don't feel bad if, you know, your, your friend, they, they got it going on. You don't know what your friend, they ain't telling you everything. They might have some debt, they just look like they got it going on. But stay focused. I remember being in school and my sister, and it was a beautiful day, like today, beautiful, cool day. They came by and they were like, I was in school at the time, they were like, let's go to the park with the top down. Come on now, who don't want to go with the top down and just hair blowing in the wind? But I had to make a decision. I can't go. I had five chapters due. This is a Sunday. I had five chapters due the next day. I had to stay focused. Had I got in the car, and had some fun with them, I probably wouldn't have had the 4.0 when I graduated. So I had to stay focused. So I'm telling you, stay focused. It doesn't matter. Don't look to the, you have to get tunnel vision. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Stay focused on what it is that you're doing. Okay. Um, set yourself up for success. Lay down a solid foundation. Structure it properly. You have to decide whether you want to be a sole proprietor, um, LLC, LLP, um, Corp, S Corp, or C Corp. This scripture, um, Luke 14 and 28. And y'all, the word of God is so true. It, it, it's, it's just so much in the word if we just get in it. But don't be begin until you count up the cost. For who began construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money, and then everyone would laugh at you. So to set yourself up for success, you want to count up the cost. What does it cost for me to open this business, or what does it cost for me to run this household? When I have a young lady come to me for business, and, and usually, you know, in a beauty salon, we just start. We just come in, set a person up with a station. Well, not for me. I like, you have to fill out an application, yes. And when you fill out an application, that's going to tell me a little something about you. I have other questionnaires. And so when they come in, some of the girls, they, they're upset with me because I'll say, okay, well, do you know what it costs to run your household? I ain't never went on no interview like that. <laughs> well, honey, this is the type of interview you're going to have here at Genesis. 
So anyway, that's the first assignment I give them. Go to, I want you to come back, tell me what it costs to run your household. Because in our world, we're working for ourselves. We're not working for anybody. So how do you know how much money you need to make? If you don't know what it costs to run your household, well, you're just shooting blanks. You know, so if it costs $2,000 to run your household, now you know how to break that down. And I teach them how to break that number down. If you're going to work four days a week, five days, six, whatever. Okay, so now you know what you need to make a week. Let's break that down to days. What do you need to make per day? And we go from there. And after they, after they do it, then they're excited, you know, because this is a goal that's attainable. I could reach this. I could do this. Because if you throw a number out there and say, let's $2,000 or 3000 it sounds like a lot. But when you break it down, you can do it. You can do it. So the same thing I'm speaking to, um, if you have a household, know what it costs to run your household. I had to learn that early in life. Being a single mom and um, trying to start a business, I had to know what it costs to run my household so that I know what I need to make. Because nobody's cutting you a check. If you're running your own business, somebody's cutting you a check. And then that's another thing. You want to know, if you know what it costs to run your household, this is how much I need to get paid. And so you learn how to pay yourself. And I teach, you know, my girls how to pay themselves. And they, they didn't like it at first, but you have to do it if you're going to stay, if you want to stay and be successful in your business. You have to learn those things. Legal protection, insurance. You definitely want to have some insurance for your business. You, I wouldn't advise you to go around it. We trust God, yes. But we still have to cover ourselves. In this world that we live in, we have to cover ourselves. I mean, we've seen a lot of people go through it with the, with the flood. You know, uh, many people didn't have flood insurance. Many people can't afford flood insurance. Some didn't have it because they said they're not in a flood zone. I'm not in a flood zone. I don't have flooding, but I, I, I pay attention to things around me. And that's, and that's another thing. Pay attention to the, um, you, you know if your drains are, are, are moving just on a natural, I mean, you know, when it's just rain normally. Pay attention to those type of things. Uh, but insurance is, is, is important. If you don't have health insurance, um, then, you know, I would recommend that. I, 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 as a single person, I was years without uh, uh, health insurance, but I had insurance on my son couldn't afford it. Thank the Lord I was, you know, healthy. Um, and you talk about a lot of praying, but, um, but to have health insurance, as you get older, you know, things happen. Um, Miss Sherry um, talked about some of those things, you know, diabetes and, and uh, high blood pressure. And they look at you like um, you, you're somebody from Mars. You walk in there, you don't have insurance. But um, health insurance is, 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 is a must. It's, it's you, you want to have it. Um, contracts. Please read your contracts. If you're leasing a building from someone or renting a building from someone, please, please read your contract. If you don't understand that, because honey, trust me, I have to have somebody read mine. It's a lot of mess in these contracts that you don't understand. Get a lawyer, get somebody, or your CPA. Usually they can understand the jargon that's in these contracts. Cause I had a, a person, they called me and it was like, I didn't know that I had to pay for um, this air conditioner. I said, what's in your contract? And I told them, you know, before they left, cause they used to work, you know, with me. I told them, read your contract, don't sign anything. Well, in most companies, if you're, um, if, you, if you're leasing from someone in those contracts, if there's an air conditioner that breaks, if there's anything that breaks, you're going to be responsible for it. So you want to have money going in. You want to know what you're signing. I don't think that it should be that way, but then that's not my property. <laughs> I would definitely, I mean, I have renters, and if the air condition is not running properly, that's the first thing. I try to treat people like I want to be treated. So if the air condition go off, I'm either, y'all can come work over here at Genesis or, you know, I'm going to get somebody immediately to go and fix it. Because who want to work in a hot salon or a hot building? You don't want to work in a hot building, so you have to think of that person, you know, your neighbor. Um, Psalm 1, that's under the contract. Let's go to Psalm 1. And this is one of my favorites. 
Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. So you want to be prosperous, and when, when, when I say, um, when we're talking about contracts, you don't want to sign to something that you don't know what you're signing to. Don't be too excited and anxious to sign something. Um, five years is a long time. It don't seem like a long time, but 60 months is a long time. 15 months is a long time, and especially if you're not making any money. I remember when um, I found my um, the building that I'm in now, and my little pea brain, I said, oh, I'll borrow extra. We're talking about counting up the cost. I'll borrow extra 10000 That 10000 went so fast. That it barely covered my uh, my paint and my floors. I need I, I I was way under. I needed forty. Here I am going to my husband, like Esther going before the king. <laughs> I need twelve thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, and he was like, "Well, you done started this, so you you got to finish it, you know." And I was like, "Wow, it, it was that easy." But I really, I wanted to just go and get a loan and on my own and just not tell him. And my neighbor, we were walking, we were walking. And she said, you can't get a loan. You have to tell him. I said, girl, I done already spent like $12,000, you know, my electrical. And anyway, so I go to my husband and of course he just say, okay, go it on and and get the money you you can't you can't just pull out you know because I, I had so much in you know but um but yeah count up the cost write everything down and that was a learning experience for me that's why i'm sharing it with you guys because i don't want y'all to have to go through that but um but yeah that's a long time and and if you're talking a, a mortgage if you have a home 30 years is a long time you know to pay on a mortgage you know if you can cut it to 15 cut it to 15. It's just a few hundred dollars, really. I'm, I'm telling you, I know. A few hundred dollars more, just a couple hundred dollars more if you chop it to 15, if you can, if you can. And always, if you do 30, try to pay a little extra on your principal. Bank accounts. Your bank accounts, you want to separate your personal bank account from your business bank account. And we're going to go to Malachi. Okay, girl, you know where Malachi is. Okay, Malachi 3 and 10. Three and 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So if you're a believer and you're not tithing and things look like they're drying up, that could be one of the reasons. It's like having a bucket with a hole in it. I'm a tither. I believe in it. If you, if you, if you haven't, he said, test me. Try it. God said he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, not his. And he don't need our money. He's after our heart. So if you're not a tither, I would highly recommend it. Um, and the last thing is show up. If you're in business, if you open at 9, don't come at 9, 10. 
please be there at least 845. <laughs> My son worked for um, uh, um, Gap stores. And if you're there at 845 for Gap stores, you're late. So they, they put them on a, a cycle, like at least be 15 minutes, you know, because, uh, you know, 9 o'clock you're late. That's what time they, you know, had to be there. And one of my clients was a manager at the time. And she said, I want to hire um, your son, you know, here. We talked about favor. And I was like, okay, thank you. He needs a job. And from that training, my son, I tell you, his work ethic, impeccable. I look at him, I watch him, and I'm like, wow, I'm so proud. He's 33 years old now. I'm so proud of him. He's on time. And, oh, Lord, if he come home and it's time for us to go to church, if I'm running behind, he will leave me. <laughs> Mama, come on. We're going to be late. You know, it's like Chris. It's just right up the street. He, he does not like to be late. I'm so grateful to the Gap stores for that training. And if you pay, if you pay attention to a lot of businesses, let's, let's talk about the fast food. McDonald's versus Chick-fil-A. Have you ever been to Chick-fil-A? They are on it. Their model needs to be the model for everybody in fast food. I'm telling you, my pleasure, everybody. I don't care if you go to the one in Dallas, Houston, wherever. My pleasure. I'm like, these people have trained these employees. That's how you want to be. That's, that's striving for excellence. Okay? Okay.